Hey folks, Bill here, Whirly Bird Video Productions, back with uh, Mike, and we've got a Mini Mamba. This is a 260, set up as a 260, you can actually set it as a 250. You just loosen these little uh, grips up and slide it in, you can set up as a 250. But I wanted to run 6 inch arms because I wanted to be able to have a little more power, see what the 6 inches felt like anyway. And then I also put a Nas on it. Now I'm not going to leave the Nas on there, I just wanted to put it on there. And when I first flew it, well, actually, Mike did the first flight on it. I was in here working on another buddy of mine's helicopter, and I hear him and Greg go outside, and I hear giggling, and the next thing I hear, <laughs> it was making all kinds of racket. And uh, we had to adjust the gains down. The gains are like default gains are 140%, yes. and we had to come all the way down to on the roll. Uh, to around 55 to 57 it seems like it's pretty good and then the, all the other gains are out about 90 it seems fine uh, but in that roll I had to adjust it all the way down to I tried 60 and it seemed like it flew okay and then it started oscillating so I backed it off I think 55 well, and, it, and it seems like it's flying okay in GPS and, and attitude mode and uh, in uh, manual mode I crashed it the first time because I had, I had put in positive expos and just to make it feel better in GPS and attitude mode because it felt really sluggish uh, and, and then I forgot about that so when I flipped into manual I had all of this wonderful power and control at my <laughs> fingertips that was exponentially more because I had put positive expo in it so I went through the trees uh, but it didn't hurt anything so it's already had its first crash test and, and but luckily y'all didn't get to see it because it, it was pretty funny because I really screwed up. But uh, Greg wasn't here to, to record, so I was just doing a test flight. So I went through the trees, but it didn't hurt anything. Uh, I, I automatically flipped my hold switch because I'm a helicopter pilot. Uh, when I knew I was going to the trees, well, my hold for a quad is come home. Yeah. So it automatically took control over the quad and wouldn't give me anything and just kept going through the woods. <laughs> And I went ahead and just shut it down. I flipped out and shut it down, and it was still falling through the trees without the motors running. Uh, it was pretty. I was laughing the whole way, but uh, it didn't hurt anything. Didn't even, it stressed one prop? You could. That's probably the first tree it, it hit before I could shut it down. But other than that, it didn't hurt at all. And I don't have any more six-inch props, so I've ordered some. Uh, so they'll be in soon, so I can swap them. But it's still flying. So we're going to go out today and actually get some flight time on it. Uh, but that those games is really messing with me so i'm like well i'll look around and see if anybody else has done this and that that it's like eight pages of people why the heck did you put a nose on there well i mean i had an extra one in a box and we thought we'd just try it with a nose on it first i mean see if you got yeah. one in a box you know try it out see if you like it or not we wanted to try it that's why i don't understand when people get on the forums and they ask hey has anybody done that and then they start flaming everybody of well why'd you put that on there well it's because i wanted to i mean i understand some folks they, they they're getting new into it and they don't know uh, but I just wanted to try it. So I, I'm going to pull that off. And actually, I've got a CC3D board I'm going to put back on it. I tell you, I really like the frame. It built really fast. I really like the way, you know, I thought most of the folks I've seen that build these kind of things where they put a bracket around the tube uh, like this here, um, it'll spin. You know, it, it just can't hold it. But Ron did a really cool thing. He O-rings. And there's two of them in each one of these little bracket pieces. And they're grooved out. That bracket piece is grooved out. So you've got basically four O-rings right here that hold that together. And, I, you know, it's not it's not going to turn around unless it's a really hard crash. And at that point, you know, you want something to give. So that's kind of what Ron has thought about. He's thought about where are your impact zones in a crash and how to limit the amount of damage the quad's going to take. So he's used like some nylon screws in the front so that, you know, if you hit this in the front, uh, the hope is that the nylon screws will break and not break your tube. Yes. Uh, which is one of the most expensive parts he was telling me. I didn't look up parts, but when we were talking to him, he, he was telling me that the design of that was why he did that. I really like the way it went put together. It was really quick. It was fast. Now, I haven't put any tilt in these motors yet because the NASA just can't compensate for that in software. Now, I thought about 3D printing a, a 10 degree angle to go underneath the box and do that. And I, I might, but to tell you the truth, I'm wanting to put the CC3D back on here. Yeah. So I'm probably not going to fool with that. I'm going to fly this. We're actually heading down to Joe Nall. Mike's first trip to Joe Nall is coming up for this year. Uh, we're going down here pretty soon, actually a couple weeks. So I'm going to leave it on there through that whole trip, and then I'll probably change it when I get back. 
Um, I think it's really well built. The carbon fiber is awesome. It's absolutely flawless. There's no blemishes like you see a lot. If you buy the, the Chinese knockoff stuff, you'll see blemishes in the, the carbon fiber. But it's really cool. It's really bling. Um, I think this uh, frame is around 100, 150 bucks. Yes. Um, so uh, it's similar to the X Hover, similar to you know the other top end brand stuff. So I think it's definitely uh, it's worth the money if you're going to go out and spend the money to get a bling. I really like the Mini Mom, but I like the fact that you get the little rubber grommety thing for a um, one of these. What's that called? The Mobius. Yeah. So the, the Mobius goes right on there. It fits really nice. So that, that I'm going to use that to do some recording. So I'm going to get to the one point that I do not like about this quad. Uh, and uh, all of us go out and we like to buy... Where's that? Yeah, these little surveil zone cameras. They're 600 line yeah. Sony. They do really well. I use these on all of my quads. They're cheap. 20 bucks, 25 bucks, something like that. 27 dollars. From Surveil Zone, I really like them, and, and I use them on everything. The quality's great. It will not fit. It's too <laughs> dang big. So uh, you know that's the only thing I don't like. Just you know, you know and, he, and he probably even says on his website, I haven't looked of what size camera you need. Uh, uh, hopefully he does. If not, he, he definitely should, because most folks are going to use this. And and, and all my buddies said, we're taking it out of the case. Well, it's not any smaller out of the no. case. This case is very limited, so it just it's not going to fit. Now, I could stick it way out here, that kind of thing, but then there's no protection. So it really isn't that huge of a deal as long as you know that up front. So I should look at his website and see if it says that. If not, then that would just be my recommendation to Ron to make sure he puts that on there of what size camera can fit in here. Now, what he did do in thinking of that. He gave you this bracket, which you can, instead of using the Mobius, you can stick that up here and put your camera up here. So you could use the default camera. Uh, but I really do want both. I want my Mobius up there recording, and I want this to see out of. So, th so that's really the only big deal. And again, he thought about it. It's just I would rather him, you know, and, and again, it may say on his website, so I apologize if it does, of what size camera can fit down here, because I want this up in here. So really, that's not that big a deal. I went and went back to Surveil Zone. They had the mini same, same, well, the same specs as this camera. We haven't tried one, so I'm going to try one, and it was $37. So it was $10 more, so really, it's not that huge a deal. Unfortunately, that stuff comes out of China, so it's still not here, and I got snaps flying around. Uh, so I'm still waiting on, on a camera. Uh, so I can do FPV. So we're gonna fly it today just by looking at it, fly it around, and I'll, I'll kinda, of, you, you can see the flying, but I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, it flies great. Uh, in, in, in the uh, GPS mode, you know, it's really smooth. Now the gains are all turned down, so it won't do a whole lot, but I can see a beginner wanting to get into mini quads that this would be really helpful to have a NOS on there and fly it in GPS and, and altitude mode. Yeah. Because uh, it, it, it's really smooth. And then in, uh, in manual mode, it really rips and gets with it. I mean, it's super fast. It's got a lot of power with those six-inch props. It's going to be great when I get my, uh, my NASA or my uh, CC3D board on there. I want to try a NASE board. That's why I got confused. I may try the NASE. Mike is messed I with like the NASE. I like the NASE 32. Uh, so we may, I may try that, but I'm used to the software on the CC3D now. And, you know, old folks, it's hard to teach them new things. Uh, but I, I probably will try one. They're cheap. Just to, I'd like to try it. Uh, but I do like the way that it's uh, that it goes together. I like everything about the frame. It's really nice. I think I like the uh, battery bracket. And I first didn't put this on here. I took this off because I couldn't get a 2200 milliamp battery in there very well. And Ron actually sent me the upgraded parts. Uh, that he had some upgrades with the new version. If you buy one now, you'll get it. it had some metal screws and it also had. A little bit longer standoff so you could get you a 2200 milliamp battery in there and uh, Mike was like well you need to put that on there next thing I know he had it put on there so I got the brain now I'm glad it's on there it really protects the the battery when I went flying through the trees in manual mode it, it, you know it landed right on that and that would have been the battery to take the impact instead yeah. of that so it helped my batteries but I really like it there's plenty of room for stuff that was another reason that I was like I'll put the nozzle on a mini because most of the times you can't. There's just not enough room to try to get your GPS and all that in there. Uh, I 3D printed the little GPS box and I copper put uh, double-sided copper in there. Well, it's actually single-sided copper uh, tape uh, to try to bring my RF, RF from there. So it, 
I don't know if I needed to do that, but I had it and said, what the heck, put it in there. So it looks working. It so. seems to be working fine. I went ahead and I actually figured out how to do the NASA dance, which I had never done, <laughs> which is really easy. Mm. Everybody talks about how complicated that is, but I thought it was really yeah, easy. It's very simple. I didn't think it was hard at all. So at any rate, let's go fly this thing and uh, try it out. And then we'll come back and, and close out with our... So we rate these from uh, one to five and we got five different categories and the first one's instructions. And I could tell, you know, Ron wrote the instructions itself because it was really good. It wasn't the Changlish that we call it, which is the Chinese version trying to translate into English, which is really hard. That you don't have to deal with here. Ron does a good job. I thought the instructions were really good. Um, even had pictures, you know, pictures are good. Those are good. Uh, so I have to say, you know, for, for what you get nowadays, especially, I have to say that's a five. He did really good with his instructions and that kind of stuff. Uh, second, the categories assembly. You know, how did it go together good? It went together really well. There were no parts that didn't belong. He, he had each individual part pack wrapped together. So like he had all the arm parts in a bag that was labeled arm parts. And then inside of that, he actually had individual bags also yeah. for like... The, these arms versus the top arms, he had them individually la wrapped and labeled. So it was really easy to follow along with instructions to pull out the right parts out of the right bag so you didn't mess anything up. So I thought that was that was pretty good. Uh, I mean, I'll have to give him a five on that because it was, it was just as, as you would expect if you were going out and buy a top-end product, it's going to have good support, good instructions, and it's going to go together good. You know, none of the carbon fiber was misshaped or anything like that. All the holes were drilled perfect, everything lined up. So uh, I'd have to give him top marks on that one too. Um, the third one is performance. You know, so it's, it's kind of hard to rate it because performance on this, you're rating really your electronics. And I'm using the electronics on all the other mini quads. So it, it's flying really good. Um, you have to fall back, I guess, if we're talking about just the frame, which is really what we're talking about yeah. uh, on the review. You know, it's all carbon fiber. And, you know, he put a lot of thought into, like, those crash zones we talked about earlier. And, like, the front uh, screws that are here, that are nylon. So those will break in a real hard crash and keep from breaking that. So I think that goes along with the performance some. You know, and the carbon fiber, again, is all flawless. It's hard to, to give somebody a full five on everything, but it, it was really good. I don't know where he could make an improvement. Except maybe make this front where a standard camera would fit. Maybe. But again, that's not that big of a deal. Yeah. If you know up front, you're going to have to have a smaller camera. It's not that big of a deal. So maybe some wider landing gear. Go ahead and put maybe something that has like a 450 size helicopter landing gear might help. But again, that's only in the gravel. I mean, if you're landing in something flat, it's probably fine. Black top, that kind of stuff. Um, but I think I probably will put some 450 landing gear just to keep it so it doesn't tip over and screw my 
props up every time. Of course, my hex hover does that too. Yeah. So it's not like it's the only one that, that likes to tip over, but it, it's a lot taller than the X hover. So it, it, any kind of top heaviness really makes that kind of go crazy. And our fourth one is quality. Well, how can you expect? It's carbon fiber. Yeah. It's real. It's thick. It's not super thin like a lot of, you know, you find some stuff that's really thin. These arms are, shoot, that's pretty thick. I wish I had my calipers out here, but um, and, the, and it looks great. I don't see any problem with quality at all. Do no, you? I, I mean, it, it, it looks really well put together. Uh, a lot of thought went into it, I think. It's it's very light. I did notice that when that's the first thing I noticed when I picked it up is pretty light. Yeah. For, especially as long as it is, it's actually pretty light. I, I was impressed with that. And it's very rigid. I mean, it you know you would think that these no no thicker than these. Uh, the body is Top it would have a little flex in it, but it doesn't have any flex in it. It's super yeah. strong chassis. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and he uses a mixture of nylon and metal standoffs. And I think originally, if I understand correctly, the original ones had nylon standoffs here, and he found out that that was causing it to break really flex. easy and causing flex. So he's replaced those, and you can see the blue screws. Uh, the, all the new version of the Mamba has the aluminum screws with some metal standoffs that kind of go together, and it makes it. He sent me this top part. He asked, well, what color do you want? And I said, well, I don't know. And I asked for one color, and he said, oh, I'm actually out of that one but i got this one and i'll send you this one and i said well okay and i didn't think nothing about it. but man when we crashed out there it was really easy to find it looks like that's yeah, lit up i mean it looks like it's powered on but it's not so i really like that that colored top makes it cool and you can see it flying around too gives you a point of orientation of course once i get the fpv who cares i'll, I'll rarely be looking at the quad while it's flying around so i, I mean quality wise i'd have to go five again he's getting five all the way across the top i hate when that happens because everybody thinks you don't give it a good review but uh, I, the, the, the biggest issue I have is that camera size and I, I can't fault him for that until I go check the website and see that the website says that you can put a standard size but again I think that's why he gave you that piece he knew that wouldn't fit so you can fit that standard camera up there so again it's, it's hard to fault him on that since that's just my opinion yeah value for the money oh I would love to see this cheaper but it's you know it, it's a lot of work and effort. He's got cost involved that he's going through. He's got, you know, all his processes that he's going through to get it manufactured. So you're going to, you know, you get what you pay for. I mean, it always comes down to you get what you pay for. Uh, so 150 bucks. Um, again, I would love to see it cheaper, but I don't think you're going to see one cheaper anywhere to have the quality that you got. Uh, with this kit and if you if you decrease the quality somewhere you could decrease the price and I would rather pay for it and get a really good one so you know the X hover frame I got that was around the same price yeah. so I mean you know it's uh, I, I, and this I, is more versatile too you know you can actually tilt the motors and get a little more speed and yeah it's got more room to put your gear in so yeah, it's definitely no problem to get your video transmitter and all that stuff in there, even the nozzle on there. And my video transmitter is all on here. I just don't have the camera hooked up. So everything's hooked up here and ready to go. And like he said, with the tilt mechanism, I want to try that. That's why I wanted to try the Mini Mamba was to put that 10 degree tilt on it to get more speed without banking hard. Uh, so when a CC3D board goes on here, I'm actually going to set 10 degrees in it and fly it with 10 degrees of rotation. Uh, so uh, there'll be more videos on this coming up with that once I get that set up. So a uh, value for money, I, I'm going to give him a four because I just, I can't give an absolutely positive, wonderful score for somebody like that. Uh, so anyway, that's, that's a, about uh, maybe four and a half. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. You five, okay, five. But it's, it's again, you know, it's, it's, I think you get what you pay for and I think it's worth the money. And if I had to go out and buy one and I wanted one, I wouldn't care to go ahead and pay for it. I paid for my X hover with no problem. So again, it's the same same deal. So uh, I think I think it's worth the money if you're wanting a mini Mamba and you're wanting this particular setup. I wouldn't hesitate to go out and buy another one. Yeah. Um, and I can't wait to try the 10 degrees with that CC3D with my camera in. Till I get that camera in, I'm really not worried too much about doing the really hard flying because yeah. it's these things are hard to see. 
and you start flying real hard, they get away from you really fast, you can't see them. So with the FPV, that it takes that whole situation out of the problem. You're now, you know, you're, you're, you're in control in the cockpit, and you don't need to know the orientation because you're sitting in the orientation. So once that gets done, for sure I'll have to have that CC3D on there. Uh, but for right now, we'll just play around with the, with the uh, GPS system until probably after Jovenal, unless I get industrious, because, you know, that's coming up real soon. There's a lot of stuff to get packed up and ready to go. So with that said, out of the 25-point system, he's getting 25 points because I ended up reneging and giving him five on that last one. So if you're looking for the Mini Mama, don't hesitate to buy one. It's a thumbs up for this review. I can't wait to uh, get some more flight time on it, put that to CC3D on it, and get that camera in there and uh, fly it around at Joe Nall one way or the other, whether it's got that in there or not. But uh, we'll be heading out down to Joe Nall on the 8th, and we won't be back until, what is it? 17th something like that yep so it's 10 days so if you guys are down at joe Nall and we'll be up at the helicopter flight line come out and see us say a hi uh, we always like to see everybody so uh thanks a lot for watching please rate subscribe give us a big thumbs up and we'll see you next time on whirly bird video